Well, we missed another chance, I guess, to get our potting soil. Um, doctor's appointments, everybody busy, sick, this, that, and the other. So now it could be Monday or later, or <laughs> the landscape in place closes early today. So, you know, the person called me up and said, hey, we'll, when I'm done doing whatever at like four o'clock or... I said, well, they close at 12.30 or 1 o'clock. Well, never mind then. That's it. This kefir pear is going into full flower mode. Look at that. At least on the bottom half. Now, the top half of it has no flowering at all, from what I can tell. He says that um, monkey wrench bed 2 mystery bed with the mountain sour soap and jackfruit in it. And it is near like raised bed one and two, and uh, the persimmon, the seiju or saiju persimmon tree. And I was just wondering if we could make a second south wall bed, maybe right here by the persimmon tree, and just bring it out. And you know, this isn't a hundred percent like solid wall here, there's going to be some wind, but. Could we make a second south wall bed, you know, and still allow room for a lawnmower to get in this way and maybe a lawnmower to get in that way? I mean, I don't know if that's a great idea or not. I just came up with that idea like three minutes ago, right before pressing record. Then I thought, well, what if we do like a Mexican Tithonia, a perennial wall? So you plant a wall of these tithonias as big as the row. They get, you know, 14, 16 feet. Hopefully getting like a bananas behind it, you know, as like a south wall. And um, hopefully getting bananas that don't get as tall as the tithonia. So you got a wall of tithonia. You know, and maybe three or four foot back, you have a wall of shorter bananas. Will that protect it? Will it be enough? I don't know. Or maybe we could use some half rotted blind fencing and maybe put two instead of one where the one behind it is offset maybe an inch and a half or two inches to fill some of the air gaps. I want you guys to look at something too. A couple videos back, two, three, I said, well, it looks like this female flower is gonna do well. And now it's brown. It looked like it was fixing to just expand and open. So the male flowers seem to do good, but the female flowers are dying. Is this some type of disease? As you can see, the males are opening up. There's some there getting ready to open. They're fully developing. And not a single female. I don't know if the genetically different plant or plants that we put over there on the other side of that banana mound are surviving. Maybe they'll do something different. Or that one there that was obviously cut off you know, from the cold last year and, and is its own plant. So... We'll have to just look at everything and see what is happening with all of them. Is it just a single plant that's not doing right or other ones doing the same? This is that peach tree we planted in this mound. You can't even really tell it's a mound because the weeds are all over here. A raised, you know, aged wood chip bed. Not looking the best in the world. Some of the bottom growth looks nice and green. This top stuff, though, it looks like it got stressed out probably through all that drought and all we had. Here are those nice swamp sunflowers, and they seem to be spreading themselves, which is nice. You know, you, you see them on the side of the roads and ditches and foresty areas sometimes, and I've never seen them here, so I'm so glad that we got a plant and put it in the ground. And now it's multiple plants, and hopefully it'll keep multiplying. And here's our Chiang Mai 60 mulberry. Looking better than it has, but it's still tiny, tiny. I mean, when I back this out, you can't even really see it because of all the weeds. So what, maybe we need to mulch around it, um, give it as much nutrients as possible. All these things here are probably sucking away the nutrients. Other American persimmon that 
had not come back from the roots yet still has not come back from the roots this is another one of them uh, raised beds can't see it because like everything else the weeds have taken over but I guess I'm going to be giving up my ambitions for now to get a variety of American persimmons here haven't had luck grafting American or Asian persimmons and um, I don't want to spend 50 60 bucks for a little micro grafted plant over and over just to have it die anyway I have been doing a little bit of research on another true guava species other than the lemon and strawberry catlay and yellow guavas and other than the Chilean which seems to not really like our climate or something and I found another more rare one that's supposed to be similar to the strawberry cat lake guava with more cold hardiness and it gets huge in in its native country so we're going to be looking into that adding a little bit more excitement to our mix right this behemoth here is a remnant of when i was trying to get into like and starting a nursery which probably wouldn't have focused on fruits it would have been everything mostly palm trees is what i was thinking at the time we kept them in the pot so they just they they dwarf themselves you know with root, root being root bound and stuff like that and in fact there's two pots there and that guy just grew out of a let me see what is it a one or a three gallon probably a three gallon pot there let me focus in see the roots coming out of it and then we have another one that's right in front of it probably should try to pull that one up and see if we can give it away to somebody or something but it's probably nine or ten foot tall and it's it's pretty my idea originally was to have a driveway going all the way down you know full of palm trees because here was the driveway gate um or at least one of them i think these are two separate types of palms even though the leaves look the same the stems on these guys right there is full of thorns but they're i guess they're two fan or windmill palms I remember I got like California, Washington, and Chinese seeds. And that's in the same time frame when I got those those uh, Rio Grande, Palma Rio Grandes. And I planted one out in the back. And of course, them being a sable type palm, you don't get that trunk for a long time, you know. <laughs> here's Here's another one. without the needle leaves. Yeah, I wonder if any of my uh, grow clubs would want any of these. Because they, they mostly do permaculture, herbs, tea stuff, fruit stuff, maybe like sweet potato, root crop, you know, katuk and all that, you know, and um, moringa. Not sure if anybody would want a palm tree well i tried to pull that bottom one out but i guess it's going to take a shovel to get under the roots and cut the roots some pretty butterflies huh yeah they're pretty butterflies. they're black and yellow Wee. yep Wee. they're not flies Wee. and they're all orange daddy good so good news for us at least <laughs> just got a call saying that somebody's going to pick up a yard of potting soil for us and uh, before the landscape place closes and they're going to come back later in the afternoon or evening to unload it so we may not get to actually repot any plants today but hopefully tomorrow I don't know if it's early enough maybe we will repot something well i'm cleaning up around this relatively new persimmon tree here the tag fell off or maybe it's underground makawa 
and I'm gonna, I guess I can get the tag if it doesn't break and bring it up here. And I can see I already put ashes and stuff when I planted it around this area. So I'm gonna pull the weeds and put some real mulch on. Just a little bit of our magic soil here and put it around there before we, we mulch dump it. the scoop around there. And this mulch we just found buried under the weeds. This is last year's mulch. Not sure how long it was aged before we got it, but this is aged wood chips, you know. This is what people buy truckloads of, but this is pine bar. Yellow uh, mold and stuff already building up. You know, there's some white specks from probably fungal roots. Already some breakdown of the wood chips in some there. Some kind of beetle in here, not sure. He done dug down really deep fast. And there we go. Got the tag up here so we can see it. So we're not gonna like use any like a stink water or any fertilizer here. There's gonna be a little bit of nutrients and all that. It's gonna break down over time, give it a little bit more nutrients. Hopefully the weeds don't poke through, but we still have the tomato cage right there. If we have too many problems just to make sure we don't mow it down or something we used probably a third of what we had in there so we got enough for one or two more plants or maybe to put in another bed or Doing something the same i guess with this other persimmon guang yong it may not even be spelled right because the nursery does misspell a lot of the cultivar names magic soil went down full of earthworms Ooh, there she is and I'm not overdoing it with the mulch. You know, a lot of people, if they were mulching and landscaping, they'll put a big old like three, four, five, six foot perimeter of mulch around. But this, this is not really for the weeds, but hopefully it'll prevent just around that, you know, eight or 10 inches around it. But just give it some feed, you know, slowly break down with the mycorrhizal fungal activity and the earthworms, there's earwigs all in this stuff bacteria everything to uh, hopefully give these guys some growth because they they're not really big yet and these guys are pretty expensive just giving them their best chance and i hope that they grow more come spring or early summer when they you know break buds yeah. I'm going to try not to film too much of that maintenance stuff on season two because I think season three of our online garden vlog is going to focus a lot on trying to strengthen our trees, you know, to lessen the weeds, make them more productive, make them have more growth, you know, doing post mycorrhizal beds and mulching and stuff like that. So I think that's going to be a big part of season three. So that's going to be a big part of season three. Hopefully giving back to the community is going to be a big part of season three, you know, doing more of the, the stink water hopefully will be a big part of season three you know and we talk uh, occasionally about you know permaculture versus pediculture where we're we cannot force the land to do something it's absolutely not going to do or the the um the the climate where we're at the humidity rainfall and all that we can put something in sand to make it a little more draining sand and rocks or whatever we can build a raised bed to make things higher above that swamp but we can't change the humidity we can adjust the temperature around the in the root system and around maybe the base of the plant by doing these mycorrhizal beds as everything's breaking down and creating heat in the root system. We can plant things in the shade, you know, if they just don't like our hot scorching summers, or if, you know, to give it a microclimate to maybe have them survive if we're on the fringes of what what that, like the cat lake guavas and stuff are, and jabotacabas maybe, have them survive in the shade zone. You know, whereas in the open air, they may freeze, you know, in the first or third winter, you have a harsh winter, 
they may just die. And things may look harsh. They may look overgrown. You know, we don't have grass catchers on our lawnmowers. So we're not immediately taking those nutrients out of, you know, the land by making it look pretty. We might be pulling it by hand using a sling or a scythe or anything like that. And of course, I'm only one person doing most of the job here and trying to raise family and, you know, taking care of somebody in a wheelchair. So um, with health problems as well. But I think over time, as you add more plants, as you have more successes, you lessen those spots like that that are overgrown and weedy and have invasive plants in them by slowly, like I said, introducing new plants that you won't need, herbs, whatever, chop and drop stuff, Mexican tithonia, you know, if you have comfrey up north, um, and you slowly say, Mrs. Mother Nature, can I put this here? Can you please take care of it for me? I'll take care of you. I'll try to, you know, get the bad stuff out and hopefully slowly make the yard look prettier, make it look a little more pedicultured, you know, to appease neighbors and stuff like that. There have always been issues with like code enforcement and homeowners associations where people weren't allowed to even have a garden in their front yard at all they have to do it behind the behind the south wall or whatever you can only garden there and it's it's like an uphill battle sometimes but we're going to try our best to keep our front yard you know sort of in that realm of petty cultured while we introduce new things and our swamp land in the back well like i said we're, we will continue to use the weeds to make compost and all that stuff chop and drop and uh, our stink water what is unsightly to me is all that cherry laurel there that i have to cut out every darn year every season and virginia creeper and of course those creeping daisies they're pretty it's not that they're super unsightly it's that they're super invasive they invade everywhere that they go you know and i don't know if we can ever get rid of them I don't really like the southern junipers because they create you know uh, rust and stuff for your may halls or different things you know hawthorns all hawthorns true hawthorns i think are susceptible to rust disease and if you have any, I think up to like two miles away, they could potentially have that disease and you have to spray some sort of fungus. Oh, is that what I think it is? I just bought it this like 30 seconds ago. There is a big hornet's nest up there in that red maple tree right there. I went around here and I trimmed a lot of the cherry laurel limbs down that I could get with the uh, pruners here. And I piled them up here near this kind of a uh, this dip here toxicity island i don't know what i'm going to do with it in the long run am i going to keep it here and am i going to move some of the stuff to another bed put this in a banana circle after we put logs in it it's hard to tell but i still need to get a chainsaw out there and cut the bigger uh, pieces of the cherry laurels out these guys here are going straight to hell so you may have noticed that we have been filming in 720p versus 1080p and 4k which we started doing a, quite a bit but you know there are two i guess main reasons why we switched back to 720p one was our t-mobile and stuff internet is just variable speed and sometimes it takes forever to upload other times we get to upload really quickly two actually there's three reasons two is um we run out of space doing 4k all the time even if we do too too much 1080p we run out of space on our phones and stuff don't really have like a big high quality production studio where we can, we're just air dropping a few files and editing it later you know and the third reason is because we were doing it in just so much you know cloudiness and rain and 
it's it wasn't vibrant summers in that were just gorgeous everything was kind of subdued so not perfect lighting or anything so but now i've kind of started liking doing 720p because we can do 30 minutes or an hour or whatever we don't have to worry about it not uploading or just running out of space here not that i'm intentionally doing that but i'm also feel more free that if i do a video for a day or two or whatever and i ramble on it's okay i'll show you guys something that i seen earlier today i was like what is this egg looking thing here and i realized that's that little tiny meyer lemon tree of course we had a lot of limbs fall on and stuff but it had a little tiny fruit and it looks like it's ripe it's a micro ripened <laughs> Meyer lemon. mission accomplished we got the dirt dry lint for the birdies we do a lot of laundry around here five people and the kids constantly throw their clean clothes on the messy floor and you know dogs and cats and all that stuff they get like so half of the stuff we do isn't even dirty other than the kids not doing right they gotta learn one day been working pretty much all day long since this morning you know doing kid stuff getting that day up pruning the heck out of all these you know cherry laurels and a variety of other things so i'm tired but we still got a little bit of daylight left gotta do some more do the sabar jabba tacabas here we got some small containers here and there may be a couple more than this and you know we might choose the biggest one or two for like a bigger pot but we'll so see we got five there and we got one two three four five six seven left gotta find a bigger pot for them or another smaller pot or two for them. there we go there's 12 sabara jabotacabas jabotacabas however you pronounce so it. it looks like we got 18 total of the sabaras so you might say wait you had so many seeds you know where are all the plants there probably was a few that did not come up and we planted a lot you know in the ground in different areas just experimenting you know despite the high price of the seeds just to see if maybe three five ten years we just all of a sudden look up and there's a jabota jabota plant you know probably won't happen but possibly and we had some uh, uh we we're experimenting with different feeds and stuff we use urea and all kinds of stuff and that ended up killing a few of them off so that probably explains that and there may still be a few in pots or somewhere that are unaccounted for so far they're just somewhere in all the other plants an avocado two pomegranates and two figs here that are in really small pots that we're going to upsize to probably about a gallon uh, more plants in the up potted you know this is the should be the mexican avocado unless it's that random seedling that i found in the compost xl fig flanders fig uh kazaki or pomegranate and medinavia something i guess a russian or ukrainian pomegranate red jabotacabas red hybrids here too there we go i'll do a final count but i think we're we planted somewhere around 40 plus plants today maybe not all on camera got two of the largest uh, red hybrid Jab jabotacabas in three gallon pots and some of them in super small pots that were really small and most of them are in so, one gallon. it's getting to be dark and natalie's already calling I told her I'd be working out here until dark, but yeah, we planted somewhere around 40 uh, plants in containers, transplanted them, or repotted them, and I, I might have another 20 to 50 more, you know, but we'll see. I'm not sure. Got a variety of sizes of loquats I'm going to pull out of the ground just to have in some containers to give away or maybe for grafting uh, purposes. Um, and then we need to go get those Suriname cherries if I can pull them out of the ground without breaking the roots. You know, we might end up having to use a small shovel and, you know, coax them out of the ground very easily if, if they stress and die or something from just pulling them. I've been seeing these um, 
hummingbird moths all over the papayas and the Mexican petunias a lot lately. Probably can't catch them on camera even though there's one right somewhere around there flying around. There we go. You can kind of see. For them. some reason, I thought I had more than, more pomegranates than that. Maybe they died. Maybe I'm losing my mind. Or maybe they're just in here somewhere. I'm seeing some bud swell on some of the uh, mulberry, Illinois, Illinois Everbring mulberries I put in pots. So hopefully they're going to take root. That does not mean they're going to root, though. I've seen them swell a leaf out and then die. And no sign of any sort of uh, roots at all. So... Maybe tomorrow, our next garden vlog, we'll start taking a look at that. But yeah, we've been working from basically 8 or 9 a.m. to now, you know, doing a lot of outdoor chores in the, in the garden, I guess you'd say, in the yard.